Hi everybody and welcome along to my latest video. Now in this video I'm going to be giving you a brief history of my music. And when I say brief history it is because of course I couldn't give you every single detail because it would take me hours to tell you everything that I did with music because as long back as I can remember I loved music. I loved the whole showmanship with it or showwomanship with it. Like there was Michael Jackson, Madonna, Prince, George Michael, and they were all icons. They knew how to dress, they knew how to act, they knew how to dance, they knew how to put on a show. Their music was absolutely amazing. Now, when I say I loved music as long back as I can remember, I really mean it. And I suppose I remember, like, I always... You would sing songs like Ben for people like Michael Jackson Ben and Michael Jackson songs. And there was a thing in primary school where they used to ask me to sing in front of the class. And a couple of times I sang in front of the class. And there was one time I was singing, which was great, you know, in front of my friends in the class in primary school, which I thought was just a regular, well, not a regular thing, but, you know, I was used to it. I did it before. But then one particular occasion, loads of other people came in from different classes and I was a bit kind of um, shy at that, but it was cool. And then anyway, around the time I used to set up a stage in my garden, I used to print Michael Jackson tickets. We used to go down to the local fast food place um, where I live and they had Pepsi cups. Now Pepsi was sponsoring Michael Jackson's tour. So what I did was I used to sell the tickets around the school and we used to have a stage in my garden and I used to dress up as Michael Jackson and I used to have Michael Jackson concerts. Now was, that was the first time I was actually performing in front of people and doing music like that. I would have been about eight. And then I got into Guns N' Roses and I had a group in about sixth class called Hellraisers and which was a heavy metal band and then I got into rave music and I got into all different types of music like you know um I suppose it was Michael Jackson, Prince, Guns N' Roses, then heavy metal and lots more and then I got into hip-hop. I saw the film Boys in the Hood and it really really got me into hip-hop and I bought the Public Enemy album and the Boys in the Hood soundtrack and Ice Cube's early albums. Now they really really got me into hip-hop and not only the music but the whole culture, the graffiti and lots more. Now the graffiti side of it was actually how I got my name too because when I used to do a bit of graffiti I used to use the tag the assassin or TA. I got a big huge board and I put it down the bottom of my garden and I did a graph piece saying fresh and that was how I got the name the assassin. Now well like I was rapping at that time too I was making homemade mixtapes and I was writing songs and then I went in to the city about probably I was about 15 probably or something I don't know what age I was but it was my first time performing live and it was in the Phoenix in town and I remember it was an awesome night and we went up to a pirate station at the time in Cork afterwards called K2 and we were up there until about two in the morning and we were freestyling and we were doing loads of cool stuff. Now, in between that time, I was also publishing my own hip hop music magazine called Off The Hook Magazine. Now, I did about six issues of that and I was delighted with the reception it got. And people to this day are still asking me, do I have the old issues because they want to buy them for people and they want to buy them for themselves and they want to check them out and stuff. So that was Off The Hook magazine. Then I set up Off The Hook records and I released my first cassette tape called Lyrical Assassination. And then at that time I used to go on radio stations, Radio Friendly, and I was sitting for Stevie G, Cork's DJ, who is now on Red FM, when he was away on holiday. So I sat in a few times for Stevie and I used to love, 
you know, spinning the records and stuff and it used to be really, really awesome. And I used to have a top 10 and I used to, you know, get lots of requests and I used to love the whole camaraderie that came with working on the pirate radio station. And it was a really good atmosphere because there were drum and bass DJs, there were house DJs, there were techno DJs and they all had their own specialist shows. And, you know, you could overlook the city where you're playing the music from in the radio station. I know a lot, a lot of Cork people with a fond memories of Radio Friendly. It was one of Cork's best pirate stations. And if it was around today, I'm sure lots of people would absolutely love it and be tuning in. I used to go to Sir Henry's at the time. And Stevie used, Stevie G used to always put me on the guest list. And I used to go to the back bar where Stevie used to be playing. And... That used to be the best place for an atmosphere in Cork. And Laurent Garnier even said in one issue of Mix Mag magazine when he was asked what was his favourite club in the whole world and he picked Sir Henry's. And he said go there and you'll find out why. Now Sir Henry's had the absolute best atmosphere of any club I've ever been in in Cork. And that is because people were really, really feeling the music. They were really, really getting into the music and the vibe was just pure, pure energy. People that went there will find out. Up on my cologne, then I buy so many digits on my mobile phone. Should tell this nice and nice is hot, but I know I gotta have them, girl. As much as I love to have a lot, then I think for a moment and realize what I've got. Laura was such a sexy girl, the looks so hot. So I hit Laura's digits right there on the spot. Two hours later, we met up in town. Now I'm feeling so hot tonight, cause I know how she gets down. Baby girl, looks so sexy and classy. I love the way you move your body and talk. Sexy way, you wear your low rising jeans to show the top of your baby blue tongue, matching your baby blue boob too. Oh, shorty, you got me thinking so rude. You know, when I'm in freak mode, I don't stop, can't stop, won't stop. Ooh, I love the way you make your toy your tongue drop. Now, let's do some bumping the ground, then and moving up and down. And why don't you show a hip hop hook? How an RB and hip hop hug girl gets down. Then I'll take you for a shopping spree around town, and I'll show you how to sass the guy. The bars get down, you like a ray of sunshine. And you carry yourself like a queen I don't wanna beat around the bush, lady You're the girl of my team So you can bring your sexy girlfriend over there along And we can work as a team getting back to Radio Friendly, the pirate station, um, it was funny one day because everyone was out and they had to do something. So I was left alone in the studio and I was hosting the show and, you know, it was great. Everything was going smoothly and I was just spinning the discs. And anyway, I happened to put off a light. But what I didn't know was the switch I put off was the power of the whole, whole station. So for about for about 10 seconds, the whole station was just shut down. And thankfully, when I put it back up again, everything within a couple of seconds went back again. But I was freaking out because I said, oh my God, what if I have to do a lot more things to get it back going? And I don't know how. So thankfully, it all went back on air again soon after. But it was funny at the time. Well, actually, it's funny now looking back at it. But back then, I was freaking out. It wasn't funny at all. Now... There was other really great places in Cork down through the years, like the Savoy. The Savoy was one of my favourite places to perform. I used to perform in 
Jam Jr. And it used to be ran by Stevie G. Stevie G used to be DJ there. And I used to perform... I, I remember I used to perform my own songs and I used to perform tributes to other rappers like um, Notorious B.I.G. Um, I'd Be Missing You. And I used to be getting the crowd to put their peace signs in the air and everything for Biggie. And I used to be, you know, paying respect to Tupac and all the fallen soldiers and the fallen stars down through the years to hip hop. I thought it was a nice touch to, you know, pay tribute and respect to them. And there was over a thousand people at each show, which in Jam Junior, which was brilliant because you could get a really, really good reaction from the crowd. The City Hall was another great place that I enjoyed in Cork playing there and that was awesome. And also up in Dublin we played with Tim Westwood one night. That was one of my favourite um, shows also and probably what I loved most about the music in general besides performing it would be kind of you know on par with each other how much I love is going into the studio and recording music I always say I loved going in with nothing and coming out with something going in with absolutely nothing but just a sheet of lyrics and the basics for to make the beat and everything and to come out and try to make the best song you possibly can. I love the whole feeling of going into the studio and getting it done. And then I started making my first music video, which was Vibe. And we got that done. We, we recorded in the Vic in Cork City and other parts around Cork City. And I really enjoyed that. And then Champion was my next music video which I really really enjoyed and we done that video in Gary Spike O'Sullivan's gym in Mahan and it was such an enjoyable experience. I was you know really kind of in the epicenter of what Champion is about because I was in the studio and you could actually see the blood sweat and tears that have gone in to what it takes to be a champion in that gym because you can see the hard work that is put in to be good in boxing. Do you know, um, it was awesome being around really, really good boxers and people that train very, very hard to get where they want to be and champion was about that, not only in boxing but in life in general, in anything. It was about overcoming obstacles and you know staying positive and trying to really really follow your dreams and really chase them and I was delighted with the feedback for Champion so that was um, an awesome experience recording that. Actually I forgot one Universal Boogie which was a single before Vibe and I did that with Anthony Campbell from London who was born in Jamaica and he grew up between Jamaica, New York and London. And I did that song with Anthony, Universal Boogie. Now that song will be coming out on vinyl very, very soon as a part of a Vibe EP. The song Vibe and Universal Boogie and more will be on that. I'll be letting you know right here on the channel as soon as that's ready. But trust me, it is very, very soon. You will not have a long wait. It will definitely be before Christmas that that vinyl 12 inch EP will be ready for sale. Then I did Rocky Roads, my third video, which was very enjoyable. We filmed it in Sober Lane in Cork. And I did that with John Ryan Howard, an uh, actor who was in a very, very good Cork horror film, Beyond the Woods. And I did it with other people and from Cork. The Cork talent is really 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 good and as you can see in the videos because I was really happy with the people that took part in the music videos. Now I'm really looking forward to get back into the studio to record more music to make more music videos and everything else and I'm also writing my book which I did tell you that I was going to be talking about extra stuff too that I'm working on besides just music. Now after the Rocky Roads video then I released my album, which was my debut full-length album, which was This Is Who I Am, which is now available on Amazon. 
and I was delighted with the feedback from that. You can buy it now. It's on Amazon, The Assassin, This Is Who I Am. It's got, I think, 12, 13 songs on it. And it's got Vibe, it's got Champion, it's got Rocky Roads, and much more. Now, I think I covered a lot about my history in music. And if I think of anything as the video progresses, I will go back. This isn't going to be like, you know, start to finish, like the timeline from start to now. I will jump back if I think it's necessary, if there's something I think I left out or whatever. So this video is really going to be focusing on what I did so far in my music and what I would like to do in the future. Now, first of all, I want to give a big, big, big shout out and thank you to all of the people and my, and my fans that supported me to make me work where I am today and to make me work and work and work and stay working and look forward to work more because without the support it would no way be as enjoyable and it would be no way as enjoyable for any artist no matter what they're, whether they're an, a singer or a rapper a writer a cartoonist or anything so big respect to everyone who supports me and let's see now what else I can tell you about my history in music okay and another thing too to do with uh, hip-hop when I was growing up is I used to study breakdancing so I used to love to you know go to the classes and learn how to breakdancing but unfortunately when I was just about to spin on my head the teacher left country moved out of the country for whatever reason and the breakdancing classes unfortunately ceased it would have been cool knowing how to spin around on my head but anyway if I were to pinpoint my highlights of my music so far I would definitely have to say recording the album and every time performing because I love performing and recording because that really is when you're actively involved in creating the art of music because when you're performing even though the music is done you know the lyrics everything else it is the way you execute the lyrics on stage the way you perform the way you want to impress the crowd it that's still like the artistic flair that you should try to capture to appear as good as you can to the people that are watching you now that's why I said previously in the video Michael Jackson, Prince, George Michael, Madonna they were so absolutely brilliant for that because they were really really amazing at putting on a show and capturing the audience and just you know it's like magic in the air when you see these people because when I saw Michael Jackson live in concert it was like magic he absolutely had the crowd in the palm of his hand his talent was absolutely huge now even if I could get a tiny tiny bit of that magic in my music I would be delighted and of course any any artist would be delighted I'm sure now off the hook magazine was a very very good way to me express the type of music I liked at the time I had a letters page a wonder word a crossword word record reviews tape reviews mixtape reviews we'd interviews I had a short story I had a comic strip and I really enjoyed creating off the hook magazine and also the album you know recording the album was amazing but you know it is very important to kind of really enjoy what you're doing because sometimes you'd be working on something and you'd be really really enjoying it and you'd be loving it but then when you look back you'd be thinking to yourself wait a minute did I really enjoy that as much as I should have because that was a really really good time so now when I work on anything I try to really really capture the moment and enjoy it and embrace it so that I would have no regrets like saying oh I should enjoy that more because 
it could happen with a lot of people in a lot of situations. I heard a lot of people say stuff like that. Now, um, I can say also there is a lot I know that I'm going to do with my music in the future. Number one, I am going to be working on a new album very, very soon. And this is who I am. Is at the moment just a digital release. But that will be released as a CD album also very soon. But if you want to buy it now, you can buy the digital copy on Amazon and all good digital music stores. So at the moment, what I know in the near future is coming out is This Is Who I Am is coming out as physical copy. The Vibe EP will be coming out as a vinyl 12 inch EP. And I say EP because there's going to be a couple of songs on it. Acapellas, instrumentals, remixes, etc. And also I've got my merchandise out at the moment. And it was really enjoyable creating the merchandise and giving people a chance to support me by wearing the merchandise, etc. Because I know the artists that I love supporting, I love to buy their merchandise and wear it to let people know that I'm a fan of them. So that was pretty cool creating that. Now, as you probably know in this video, music is my main passion. And I think that if you want to really, really work on something you love, you have to have a healthy obsession with it. Yes, that's right, you can have a healthy obsession with something. Now, a lot of people might say, you know, they might um, see their kids playing the PlayStation or the Xbox One or whatever, and they might say, oh, don't be playing that, don't be playing this. But to me, I kind of understand. It is hard to blame them for playing games so much when they see these big, huge gamers on YouTube and EA, EA Sports and all the rest of it actually make a living from gaming, like Twitch and all these, you know, online platforms. So I can understand why they have a passion for gaming because that's something that they love and they see people making a living from it. So I think that with music, for me, I always went for it. And, you know, I didn't even think about the money because as Usher said one time when he, he was asked, does he do it for the money? He said, if he did it for the money, well, he wasn't thinking of money when he was five years old. Just like I wasn't thinking of the money when I was five years old, when I was into music. I love doing music because I love music full stop. And the same with writing. And so, like, you know, when you're doing something, anything, it can be painting, it can be making, like, figures, action figures, it can be you know, decorating houses, it can be, there's so many things. I think you need a passion for it if you want to happily do it. And as I say, if you love what you're doing, you don't work one day. And it's very important. And also, when you love what you're doing, you're definitely going to put your all into it. And you're going to enjoy it more, which is a plus when you enjoy it yourself, obviously. Now, the music that I make is hip hop and the people know me as a rapper, but also I do make different types of music. As Stevie G said to me one time, there's two types of music, good music and bad music. I don't like to, you know, tie myself into a genre or put myself into a corner like I'm just hip hop. I just want to do my best to make good music and... That's why when I love going into the studio, I love experimenting with different types of music. And it's like I'm a fan of all different types of music. I like heavy metal, pop music, country music, trance, techno, house, dubstep, drum and bass, and so much more. So, but now saying that, when I was a teenager, for a while, I thought that I would be selling out and I would not be a true hip hop head if I wasn't just totally listening to hip hop. I mean, a lot of my school mates were listening to dance music and commercial dance while I was only listening to hip hop and rap. So now I think it's good that I listen to all different types of music and it helps me also with my own music. Because if you were just listening to one type of music, you can't get the same kind of grasp of the musical flavour as if you were listening to loads of type. Loads of different types and just putting it all together and making your own style and putting your own slant on it. That's my opinion anyway.
roads I can't wait to get my tour on My style is good and bad, call it oxymoron Flowing hot as fire and cool as ice And it won't tall Picking all the ups with the dance like a seesaw I'm an MC whose initials spell MC Guess that means I was born to MC It's the assassin brother don't shoot When I'm on the track I kill it so the name suits Now I don't mean to blow my own horn Like this industry central feeding So much heat keeping it warm Bring a lot of heat on my journey Spitting fire like a dragon's how you will join me To make sure it's a Kodak moment Even if it's unfocused I'll walk my journey to it get clearer The more rocks I climb, the more it gets nearer My style is sick, horrid like Henry Ill with the skills, in other words, being me If it had a name, it could be Dennis Cause it's a menace My style's out there like Venus I'm going to make sure tonight's gonna be a good night Yeah, I really am, like I'm Will I Am Cause of one love for the game like for the Williams I want my music to be like a natural high Come fly with me, destination cloud nine Lyrical assassination, it's the assassination Their journey's going so fast, it's like I'm racing Now getting back to pirate stations A couple of years ago, I actually For three days Ran my own pirate station Me and another two guys And it was all hip hop and R&B now, you know, our range wasn't that huge, it was probably just a couple of miles, but still it was very enjoyable and I used to love hosting it as if I was hosting a show on Hot 97 or some big, huge, massive hip-hop radio station in New York or something. It gave me that kind of really sense of excitement and it was called Blaze FM. So that is one thing that a lot of people want to know. I hosted my own pirate radio station owned my own pirate radio station, ran my own pirate radio station for three days. to my book be published to you read to get the feedback and I hope you all love that and I'm also working on a comic and there's a lot of more things in the pipeline which I will tell you as soon as possible now I push a couple of freestyles on my channel the assassin rapper and videos started with vibe and but it was only last year that I started really posting a lot of vlogs and getting very active on my YouTube channel and I'm delighted now that it's over 100,000 views and hopefully the views will go up and up and I want to thank you once again for that and also 
you have lots of more vlogs and videos to look forward to on this channel and I must definitely make more music videos which will be very very exciting because I can honestly say I love recording music videos it is such such fun and can't wait to get back into the studio and make more more music and really looking forward to get into the boot and to just spit those lyrics and hopefully make really really hot music and then there will be a couple of surprises in the next few weeks which I will be letting you know about very very soon and I'm really really looking forward to get to work on it and also there's as I said there's so much to talk about in music now I suppose I could tell you a couple of my favorite concerts throughout my history of music my first big huge concert I went to was Michael Jackson. Prince was one of my favourite concerts. I saw Beyonce Destiny's Child about 10 times. Same with Jay-Z. Uh, Red Man. Uh, Method Man. Hinda Hicks. Um, Avril Lavigne. The Fugees. Um, loads. Lots of different varieties. Like Westlife. Girls Aloud. Um... Oh, so many different people. Uh, Ed Sheeran. Um, so many. Um, I don't know, thinking about it, I didn't really go to that many heavy metal concerts. So I would love to see Guns N' Roses, ACDC and Metallica. They would be absolutely awesome, I'd say. Now, I did go to a lot more concerts, but it's hard to think of off the top of my head. And, but I gave you... Uh, little rundown anyway of some of my favorite concerts that i went to and like others the obvious ones um nottingham carnival where it was epmd sean paul red rat goofy little kim and it was actually re the reunion of epmd and it was awesome apart from the pandemonium because i remember epmd were being reunited and i was saying to my friend oh look that's um you know, Parrish Smith coming out with Eric Sermon and it was the first time they were reunited. But people in the crowd, and there were 3 million people in the Nottingham Carnival that weekend, there were 50,000 people into the tent and someone set off tear gas. So we had to cover our mouths like that and walk and we couldn't scratch our eyes. And anyway, when we went from the footpath down to the ground, it was, you know, deadly because the crowd were pushing you. But besides that, it was awesome and then the after party in the temple in Tottenham Court Road in London where Jay-Z was performing, Buster Rhymes was performing, Cypher Sounds was DJing, it was lit I can guarantee you that and so there were some of my favourite concerts throughout my history music and well that's about it now I know when I'm going to look at this video I'm probably going to say damn why didn't I mention that or I left this out or I left that out but anyway there will be a lot more videos coming up and I'll include it then if I do forget something or if I did forget something and as I said I couldn't include everything so I hope you enjoyed this video everyone and thanks for watching it especially if you watched the full length of it because I know this is a longer video than I usually do and once again I want to thank everyone for watching my videos for supporting my videos for sharing for liking for commenting and for subscribing and if you liked this video please give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already I would love if you subscribed and Thanks again for watching. See you soon. Peace. Bye.